Welcome back to another FRC podcast. Before we crack on with the main video, we are sponsored today by Aftermarket Arbitrage. Go and check them out for all your reselling needs. In this day and age, if you've got any spare time on your hands, go and have a look at them. Reselling is a wonderful way to get involved in making a bit of money in your spare time. Use the code FRC15 to get five pounds off your first three months. Go and check them out. And thank you so much for sponsoring another video. And whilst we're here, a big shout out for Parker Rose Interiors for letting us use their incredible space for our podcast. Again, if you're into your kitchens, interior design, wonderful stuff, go and have a look at them. I put a link to their Instagram here on their website. Go and have a look at them. They're absolutely amazing and big friends of mine and Jess's. Thanks very much. Let's get on the video. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Food Review Club, the Food Review Club podcast, episode two. It's not very good when you muck up the opening line, is it? <laughs> Jess, how are you? Yeah, good, thank you. I think good. everyone liked our podcast last week, didn't you? <clears throat> Went down okay. Yeah, didn't get so much hate as I thought we would. <laughs> yeah, so everyone, everyone that was watching and listening, thank you so much for the positivity. The, uh, the feedback was great. Um, yeah, we're very grateful. It's good. This is a, I don't think there's many food podcasts out there, is there? I haven't really looked for anything. I haven't looked. Uneducated, <laughs> aren't, uh, uneducated. <laughs> we just don't statement. look and then we don't know. So it's fine. So Jess, <clears throat> this is our podcast and you have someone sitting next to you. I have. I've got Kem. Kem, it's welcome to the life. podcast, mate. Hello, guys. Thanks for having me on. So basically, essentially, Kem owns the uh, part owner of CP Packaging. Met Kem at Wingfest at the weekend. We got our house on fire. Absolutely. So much mutual food chats and, and banter. I thought, let's come on, let's do it. And you're local. <laughs> and now I'm here. Yes. And, and thanks for having me on. First guest, mate. How does it feel? Yeah. It feels great. And I've got you guys a little present to kick off no. oh my God. the podcast. Have no. you actually? I love presents. I love presents. <laughs> so oh. this is a this is a bottle of red wine. Yes. Which was you said that just course. Which was the red wine that I had at my wedding day. So no no way. it's got a little bit of a story. It's very, very nice. Thank I you hope very you enjoy much. It. It looks like a really nice bottle of red. It does. Is um, it still it's got a cork? Yeah. Talk to me about the wine. What is it for everyone listening at home? It's um, it, it, it's just a very nice, simple wine, lovely with food. You know, it's not um, it's nothing nothing major special, but it's, it's special. special to us. It's special to us. That's really kind. I'll leave you. that there. Crack it over. <laughs> just, just for those, those who listening, it is <laughs> eleven thirty at the moment. I'll stick with my Costa. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Other brands are available, but th look, there is some major sort of product <laughs> placement available on our podcast. If you're interested, let me know. Now, um, I want to talk to you guys about um, all I keep hearing about is your bromance at the weekend. Yeah, it was pretty strong. <laughs> yeah, it was. I mean, if it wasn't twins, if it wasn't doppelgangers, yeah. if it wasn't Doppel the, the body, the body warmer brothers, <laughs> bearded brothers, the bearded brothers. Yeah, we've, we've got the uncanny thing of both having a ginger beard with dark hair. Yeah, although my my beard is a lot more intense That's, than that yours. Is, that is intense beard. Yeah, and um, I'm still waiting for just for men to send me a little hook up. Yeah. Just for men, get in touch. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> All right, so... You were at Wingfest, weren't you? We, we certainly were, and what an event that was. But before we get on to Wingfest, I would like to talk... This is the perfect week to talk about breaking news, uh, things that are going on at the moment in the world. What has happened <laughs> to the world? It's gone bloody mental, hasn't it? Yeah. Petrol. I mean, petrol. <clears throat> that, like that's just... What is, what's happened? £600 stakes. <laughs> oh, Yeah. You God. know, iron brew. Iron brew going out of... Let's, let's tick these off one at a time. <laughs> so, all right, let's go to the main thing. Put it on up, put it on my Instagram a little bit. New threat, Salt Bay has opened his flagship store in Knightsbridge. Has yeah. it just opened? It opened on the... It opened oh. last 23rd. Yeah. I thought it was already open. No, mm -hmm. no. Right, got you. Okay, got you. And to say that it's caused a bit of a, a stir... Is an understatement. Yeah, I mean, it's it's quite incredible what a stir it's caused. Yeah, um, and obviously the main uh, thing that we're all seeing is is the prices, isn't it? I yeah. mean, do you um? Oh, is it like f oh, what was it, eighteen pound for four Red Bulls or something? No, or forty-four pound. Four, no, Eleven pound. Forty-four pound. Yeah. 
Six hundred pounds for a toma tomahawk. Six hundred thirty pounds for a tomahawk. You could buy a cow for that. Or I don't know if you guys know this at home. This is this is a bit of a backstory. He actually has a gold menu, so you can like everything on the men- on this particular side of the menu is gold. Like, but his burgers, it's different, various different steaks, your wagyu's, and this is where it gets super ridiculous. Um, it's edible gold flake, um, which is essentially completely tasteless. Is it hell? Is it? Is it's it okay? absolutely fine to eat. It's tasteless. Mm. Anyone who buys that is just, it's literally for... For, for show. Yeah, for show, but that's some, something for about the, that. Is, it's, the, you can buy, you spend, <laughs> spend your money on whatever you want, what you want to spend it on. But the, the £630 giant tomahawk there, with the gold on, is £1,450. Oh, my God. Oh my God. I mean, how many people does it feed? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. That's true. <laughs> like, know, if it's a family guys. of 30, then we're good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's quite out, it's, look, I think I a lot of the um, a lot of the chat has been around, like, it's just ridiculous, blah, blah, blah. You know, I don't think people can comprehend these sort of, like, £2,000 bills. Um, sorry, uh, receipts. Yeah. What was that one you put up? It was like eighteen hundred pounds. I've seen a few others, by the way, from some friends that have been there. You've asked me not to put it out. I'm talking two or three grand uh, receipts. Bloody hell. Yeah. I mean, obviously, no. There's not. It's a lot for people to deal with in their head. It's like I, I don't know the way. Would you go there? What's the most you've ever spent on a meal, like for two people? Probably about. Five six hundred quid. Yeah, I don't think it's. Probably what was that, like, was that with like a, a ten course tasting it, menu somewhere? It was almost very special. Yeah, it was actually. It was. Um, it was a. It was a ten course tasting meal, and there was alcohol involved as well. Mm. The wine. The wine. Fl- the wine course. Yeah. Yeah. And it was. It was spectacular. Mm. And, and I'll do it again as well. But it's a special occasion thing. Yeah. You know, you're not you're not eating there every week, are you? I mean it. It's all relative, though, isn't exactly, it? I mean, yeah. it depends <laughs> who you are and what lifestyle you live. This is the other thing. To play devil's advocate, right? Those are the prices. He's not forcing anyone to go there. No, exactly. You walk like, through the door, don't you? It sounds like he's, well, breaking news. We've, we've actually booked a table. I want to see what it's all about. <laughs> yeah, but I think, I, think, I think, why not? I mean, you've got to make yeah. the judgment for yourself. A- like, absolutely. Well, I, I, sorry. Go on. I what? just can't see how that it would... The, you know, like the best steak in the world. I don't see how it can go to that that level. Well, he wouldn't have had the success he's had unless it's top quality stuff, right? I mean, yeah. What I don't get is, is um, you know, I, I looked into some of the Google reviews, and you got people posting one star reviews. Okay, okay. A, a week before it's even opened. I mean, how does that? Oh, so the, really? So, like so you got haters thing. before it's even opened. Yeah. So the big thing was someone said on my thing, check the reviews. There's sort of 200 views already, and he's at 2.5 stars. And what you've just said is, what are you saying that a lot of those reviews were before yeah. they even opened? Yeah. Oh, that's ridiculous. Yeah. So, you know, I get it. I get it that people are shocked by the prices, but you know, there's you. I think this this comes back to like honesty in reviews, isn't it? I think you know we can we can talk about it later, but it shows you the, the value of like what you guys do in in the way you review places, and then how. Things like Google reviews is starting to get devalued because haters are going to hate, aren't they? I mean, you've just got people. And you don't even have to have, like, you, like those ones came out before it even opened. This is so what they're I'm all saying. They're fake, aren't they? <laughs> they haven't even been. <coughs> they haven't even been to eat the yeah, food. Yeah, exactly. It's just someone out there to get them. But someone actually messaged us on Instagram and said, "I went. I don't know how you say. It. How do you say it? Nusret. Nusret. So you say it better. Yeah. So because Turkish Cypriot background. Yeah, we go. I went he, to that Nusret. In New York, and it was the best steak I've ever eaten. Yeah. Now, this is funny, uh, Ken. Yeah. So I, I said to Jess, I was like, we actually sat on the end of the bed, and I was like, when this is all flaring up, you know, we, we need to be there. We need to be documenting this stuff. I need to, I need to put it on the page. And I, I was genuinely like to Jess, I was like, I know I need to have a steak. <laughs> so let's, I don't think I can afford to have the gold one. So I'm definitely going to be sort of like, big hundreds into one steak for me and we've got to take Callum as well not got to take Callum sorry mate we're going to have obviously for professional reasons Tag we're going to take Good luck, Callum bro. yeah we're going to share it we're going to share it no I'm not going to share it <laughs> hey Ken do you know the worst thing is go on I know how much Jess likes steak as well <laughs> So I know, I know, I know for a fact I'm gonna be a grand out of pocket. But you're very, and that's, <laughs> and that's up to Callum in now. Like obviously, Callum, I know Callum loves. You're gonna be a, having the side salad. I know, salad. Callum, I know Callum loves an, a, a small starter. Um, no, I'm joking. So for me, Kim, this is like we're gonna go and review this. This will be by far the biggest investment I've ever put into a video. Yeah. You're talking. Yeah. 
You are very much though like a person that will go. You go when you look at a menu. Yeah. You do tend to always go for the most expensive thing. I'm probably gonna get the tomahawk. <laughs> um. You're not getting the gold one. <laughs> You're not. <laughs> Did you know? It's just. I, I know just what find he's it. Like. Yeah, I, I just find it like. a bit crass, and this like, mm. like there's obviously a lot of Russian and Arab money around Knightsbridge. You know, when that when that well dries up, I don't think there's going to be. How can they sustain that? I don't know. It's just I find it. It actually amazes me. Does he even need it, to? It baffles like, me. It, well, look, there's layers to everything in society, right? Yes. I mean, I read I read one review on Google with with a guy who was like. You should have charged more because uh, it cost me more to drive my matte black Lamborghini from from Mayfair to to, to the set. Really? He said the prices aren't expensive enough. So obviously there's people out there that just don't bother. Yeah, do you know it, does it? It doesn't. Uh, some of my friends that have been like it. They like it. It's expensive. Yeah. It's well, just, it like definitely gives you a lot of exclusivity, doesn't it? You're not going to get. You, it's customer experience, isn't it? You're paying you're paying for a customer experience as well. Did you yeah, see? Exactly. Did you see relating to this? So. Backstory, I said that again. Um, about three or four weeks ago, Tom Kerridge's The Hand of Flowers in Marlow oh yeah, the was ha- made. Someone posted a really negative comment about his. It's a two Michelin star pub. I think, it's the, I think, don't quote me on this, it's the only two Michelin star pub in the country. Right. Jess and I have been incredible. Absolutely amazing place. So prices again are kind of up there a little bit, but not a patch on no. Um, this rep. Yeah. Um, I'm talking like the guy complained that the, the, the steak was maybe like £100 for the steak and, and whatever. But hey, wasn't, it a, wasn't it a burger? No, I think he had I think he had a steak. He was saying like the cabbage was £10 or £7.50 or but something. That's gaucho, look. That's gaucho sort of price, yeah. isn't it? it and everyone loves gaucho. It. Is, that, is that good? Yeah, gauchos, is, gaucho was great. I mean, in recent years, gaucho seems to have, you know... It's, it's not, I wouldn't say it's up there, yeah. but Gauchos is great. And the interiors, the place is lovely. There used to be one in Hampstead Heath was the one that I went to. Which was nice, lovely, nice, nice. Um, but yeah, what Nusret is doing. I mean, just just as a little point of interest, the guy's name in Turkish is Nusret and et means meat in Turkish. So the guy was born to be a meat, really? a meat really? slinger. Yeah. No way. And, and he, he is a meat slinger. Do you know, like, even how much marketing has he had to do? Like, none. Look, look how many people are talking about it now, and it, someone's going to be like, "Yeah, I want to go." I, I, look, this is what kind of what we I'm getting. At. Table. This is kind of what I'm getting. At. <laughs> Absolutely, just it's just it is actually amazing. But just going back to the Tom Kerridge thing, so he posted one yesterday. Uh, something saying like something like "Peace and quiet is blessed" with a picture of his face on a tomahawk, and it says "Not not six hundred and thirty pounds." <laughs> I saw it. <laughs> I saw <laughs> it. Yeah, I saw it. Shout out to you, mate. That's unbelievable. So yeah, you've got people like him. Um, and numerous other exceptionally talented, passionate chefs. And I'm not saying that Salt Bay isn't. These guys that have worked on their craft, I'm talking recipes, yeah. dishes, yeah. experiences, wine dishes, wine pairings. courses, wine pairings, like the, the works, you know. And it, it, Salt Bay is so much heavier than that. It's like kind of cool. It's kind of like Conor McGregor's just walked into the restaurant game. Go where like, where, like, did, where did you guys. Salt yeah. Bay come from? Does anyone know? Like, it, was he like a? He, I think he did. He just did. He, he did some. Uh, did his Salt Bay thing online. The way he cuts his steak, and I think he just went viral, didn't uh, he? Just, yeah. As in where? As in where did he come from? From how did he burst onto the scene? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you, does uh, anyone know? Like, I thought you were going to say his mother. <laughs> 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 He's I my believe. cousin. Yeah. He's my cousin. Shout out Salt Bay. <laughs> yeah. But um, no, I mean, yeah, it's what Matt said. He, I, it was his flamboyant nature. He already had a very successful restaurant in Istanbul. Um, and yeah, people just loved that whole thing. And then you just see the footballers and then that's, it doesn't take long. I've, yeah, exactly. I've seen, I posted a video of it. I kind of like his energy around the table and stuff. It definitely is an element of performance yes. to, to people's meal. And I po- remember posting a video on my page saying this guy's fucking like the goat of like, you know, that type of thing. And he, uh, he got slated. Everyone hates him. Well, well sorry. <laughs> everyone, you know, that, I, everyone that I know what you're talking about. Everyone I, likes I oh, well, he's, this guy's a melon, and it really, really got stuck into him. Like, I think I know we're talking about the prices today and Knightsbridge, blah, blah blah blah. But I actually probably would think he's a cool guy, and he knows what he's doing. He's not fucking stupid. Absolutely not. Um, there was something interesting to be said, though. This is another topic about how getting someone with getting so hands on with your food. Is how that, do you feel about that? Is that what he does? Um, oh my god, that was that what they do? He, I mean, he slaps the meat like it's. Uh, <laughs> 
Really? I mean, yeah, I've seen... You don't... Yes, yeah, he gets... He's, listen, he's, I mean, he's chucking it about. Yeah. He's, he's slapping it about. He's... he's, um, he's in, get, yeah, he's slapping I, it about. Uh, <laughs> There's one dish, right? Uh, like the burgers, for example. He cuts it in the middle and puts and picks them up and squeezes them and... Oh, them. The, he's the making the love to the food, honestly. Like. Yeah, it's like an extension of his <laughs> body, but... You, you, you do that and put it back and you play and be like cheers bruv thanks yeah. for that mate <laughs> thanks, and it looks like it one I could cut myself and like not have your finger yeah um, oh god did you use hand sanitizer yeah. <laughs> no look they're, they're, they're wearing gloves or whatever and maybe the chefs obviously you know, washing their hands all the time and what not I yeah. know but there's something to be said about having your food played with yeah and I'm not a big fan of that no there is this I don't, I don't know think what, anyone is are they no no, no. Oh dear. Take my strong hand. Yeah. <laughs> strong <laughs> hand. Just the mash. My hand. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that has caused an absolute scene. So we're we're gonna go. We're gonna go and we're gonna enjoy it. And yeah. I'm gonna try and we've, we've gone for a lunch booking so we could get in there early. When are we get when are we going, Jess? Next. Um, we're going on Monday. On Monday. So can't there we go. be anyone in there on a Monday, surely. <laughs> so this is all right. Let's talk. Let's talk game plan. So this should this podcast should be going out on Monday. Shout out to anyone that's come back for episode two. See, we're keeping up with the consistency. Anyway. Um, we don't know if we're allowed to film, Kim. Yeah. So we're gonna go. We're gonna go three-handed. Um, GoPro on chest. No, we're not gonna do that. GoPro on chest. <laughs> Fake hidden cameras in buttonholes. <laughs> James, James Bond style. Yeah. yeah. Oh. 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 James Bond. What a link. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> that was that wasn't strategic. Um. So will they? Obviously, I know that we can do a sort of a a. Just by the way, guys, if you are watching this now and you can hear things in the background, we are filming live at Parker Rose and Tears. This is a working kitchen showroom, so excuse the noise. This <coughs> is what it is. Um, kind of adds to the atmosphere a little bit. Yeah. Anyway, so we're obviously going to be able to film the intro outside, mm. yeah. walking in. We're going to sit down. Um, Hang on. Surely everyone films when they're in right. there. Yeah, there's a difference between going in and filming on your phone and putting it away and joining your phone and then what, what we're going to do. Yeah. Callum McCallum's got a, a big, you know, the big DSLR there with a the mic on top. We're yeah. gonna have to, I think we're going to have to be a bit tactful because I can't just sit there and do a full... Well, maybe we'll just, maybe we'll just talk to so, them. So, yeah, I don't know. Don't know. Yeah, but then if you talk to them and come clean, then we've got the chance of them saying no. Well, then you could just probably just eat it and then do a review outside afterwards. Do you know what? I don't think they're going to... I don't think, no. I don't think they're going to... Care too much. I'm gonna be a bag of sand out of pocket. I need I need sponsors. Yeah. Who wants to sponsor that video? <laughs> Let me get the guy, please. Let me get the gold tomahawk. <laughs> no. Don't get the gold tomahawk. Well, what we do know is, is we'll get an honest review from it. Yeah, for sure, mate. Yeah. You know. For sure. I just I'm excited. I'm excited. It's topical. It's trending. I know people. I know people upset people for not being a little undercover hidden gem, but we we, we like to mix up the content, Cam, don't we, Jess? Yeah. You know, so, sometimes we do reviews of McDonald's for on the secret menu because it's fun, and it's different, and it's something that someone in Newcastle can relate with to Brighton. someone down in Brighton. Absolutely. And we mix up the content. People say, "Oh my God, you've changed. You've done one McDonald's video. Fuck off." How about that? We like to mix up the content. Yeah, but I like coming from my background. You know, I obviously my company specialises in branding packaging. Yes. You know, one of my reasons that motivates me for work is that yeah. I want to help these smaller independents. Oh God, yeah, it's the you best. Know, to get off the, you know, get branded and get and become a high street presence. And you know, like to be honest with you, from my side, I love the fact that you review the the smaller independents We've or had, the rising um, stars. It's much are, better. They are some of the best. That's some of the best thing about doing food review club. Um, the feedback you get from people that have. It's really helped. It's been amazing. Yeah, man. You're doing the same. We had a sponsor this this week uh, called John Signs, and they do uh, people's signage outside the front of the shop. Again, similar to what you're talking about. It's so important. Of course it is. Branding, how they look and the feel, and it's great. There's nothing worse when you go to a takeaway and they just put it in like a stupid polystyrene box that they've got from... Yeah, and polystyrene is an awful product. I think I've got something worse than polystyrene boxes down in my mind. What's that? It's the it's those silver lined bags. Oh, oh the um oh, the foil bags. Oh my god, get yeah. that. Get it away from my yeah. food. Yeah. I mean if you put oh, listen, what Gordon Ramsay gave me one. Yeah, that's yeah, true. Yeah, I saw the review. Gordon Ramsay, Street Burger, gave me a silver bag. Listen, Gordon, I like you. I love what you're about. That is honking. It, your burg, your, your, it, well, this, everything this sweats. This man will know. I remember last time I saw you. Yeah. You got so excited. You were just like, I love boxes. 
I love boxes. You it's do. weird, isn't it? I mean, who gets so excited about packaging? You I mean, got excited around. about packaging. So what's the, what's the problem with the the foil bags? Well, I mean, the sweat. It's the food sweats. The, uh, it's just not good. It's just not. It, the focus there is just trying to keep heating, but then all you do is is you cause condensation, and then you know the food just becomes terrible. There's so much better options out there, and. If anyone wants to uh, no, discuss their bag, give me a call. Uh, <laughs> but um, yeah. there are so many better options out there. Like the, the stuff that you use for Holy Burger. Yeah. You know, you know those those brown those those yeah. brown craft corrugated boxes. Everything's like. everything's a balance. Some if you could either keep it super hot and raise condensation, or you can have a middle ground where they get something that's yeah. that's, that has been ha- had the ability to sweat. Uh, sorry to release that condensation but you're probably not going to be as warm but you've got a better product so right. it's, a, it's a it's a toss up between the two you, you're, you're spot on and obviously you know I, I, I work with a lot of, of of people that your followers know to the Chicken Georges of the world and all these guys and you know the conversations we're always having with, 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 the, with the takeaway places is that how do I get my food to the customer you know when delivery radius Mm. with Uber Eats and, and Deliveroo has, has become a lot wider. Yeah. So it's about striking that fine balance between the, the packaging, keeping the food warm, keeping it crispy still. Mm. And, and, you know, and that's what... Chips. We, this is something that will affect every single person that watches this, loves a takeaway. This is our audience, Cam. And you're, you're the man facilitating the... You're bringing the, the, yeah. the food that leaves the kitchen needs to turn up at the... Yeah, you just need you just need Uber Eats and delivery not to play football with your package before yeah. it gets to your house. That's that's or take bites out of it yeah. as well. <laughs> no, that doesn't yeah, happen. That, yeah, that's happened. That's happened to me and my mates before. Uh, no shut up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What food was it? Like a burger? It was. Uh, I think it, my mate ordered a kebab and um, everyone's food came and then he opened his and there was a massive bite out of it. Shut up. And it was like someone's. Someone's bitten my food, bro. Like, just, what? Could you see? Could you see? You can see a huge That's mouth. Disgusting. I mean, he must have been like some six foot geezer as well. <laughs> Unless he gave it to a dog to bite. I don't know. But <laughs> oh god, the yeah. j- big jaw imprint. Yeah. You wouldn't mind if it's like a slice of pizza, but taking a bite, that's gross. Yeah, that's well, what you would mind. So obviously, you were at Wingfest with being the, the main sponsor of the event. Um, you were Lone Ranger in it, so was I. So we spent a lot of time together. It's, it's cool listening to you talk about your packaging. I know it's like, and it's why you're sitting here today. Like this guy's a really interesting character with his his business, and you've got some wicked things to talk about. Which, which again, why are you here? But it is actually amazing. To, this is packaging is one of those things you don't consciously think about. You think about the, the delivery and the, the chefs, what, where you're going to go. But actually, the packaging is really important. Yeah. If you're getting a delivery, or well, even sitting in a restaurant, it's the branding aspect. Like what you've done with Chicken George, for example. Yeah. That packaging is amazing. Yeah, well, shout out to um, one of my designers who there we go. is the man behind the, the current branding for that. Um, but uh, from the packaging side, which is my area of expertise, I don't claim to be a, mm. a, you know, a designer because I'm not, but I'm more of a, a manufacturer background. But yeah, yeah, we, we've, and, and, we, and we're evolving Chicken George's packaging as well. I mean, well, what are you doing? Um, we're just tweaking the style of the box because. You're just going in for exclusives then, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, it, their new bit of packaging will be launching soon because we, I sat down with Chris, the owner of Chicken mm-hmm. George, um, and Dan, you know, two, you guys know them very well, and we're all sort of friends as well. And, you know, it was like, look, the, the, the chicken, what's, what's Chicken George famous for Their Chicken the fried, the fried gold. And it's that crisp, right? It's that, it's yeah. that crisp, right? Yeah. So, you know, they, they found that they were losing a bit of that crisp because of the delivery rate is getting so wide these days. So yeah, yeah, yeah. We had to come up with a kind of solution, and it was so simple, but it was just to allow an optimum amount of steam out of the box during mm-hmm. the delivery process. Optimum amount yeah. of steam. I, I, read my thes- I read my thesaurus last night. <laughs> <laughs> you know. um, What's your um, background before you got into CP packaging then? Um, so... <laughs> see, my my background's always been in kind of like the, the sales side of things. Um, believe it or not, before I got into CP, I was selling kitchens. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> no. yeah. And uh, this it is a very nice familiar. kitchen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> but, um, yeah, and then... Um, always been around food. Yeah, I've always, <laughs> I've always been around food, yeah. So, um, but as a family, we got a bit of a background in manufacturing. Um, and then uh, in 2014, um, I had some very bad health issues so um, I had a, a blood clot in my lungs no right? way yeah 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 so I had a blood clot in my lungs which caused my heart to stop on a oh, football shit. pitch mm. and then um, I was in hospital throughout the whole of December 
2014, and then 2015 was the start of my recovery. And then um, instead of getting back into like work, when I was ready to get up into work, I sort of uh, started working with the family business. At this point, there wasn't no real direction with the family business, but for some reason, um, there was a bit of wholesale packaging going on. And I thought, well, this looks, this looks interesting. So um, by the end of 2015, CP Packaging, as you guys know it today, mm -hmm. w mm -hmm. was born. Um, I, I took a loan out, I built a website, I, I went down the brand quality, road, and I was like, "There's no, we're no longer going to do wholesale packaging. There's just, there's, it's just not a market I want to be in." Um, and then I spent the next couple of years flying around the Far East, finding manufacturers. Um, wanted to be that guy that people came to when they wanted to get printed packaging, you know. Mm. Um, and then. We're bringing that closer and closer to the UK, and now we are. We, we manufacture a lot of our stuff in the UK and in Europe, and yeah, we've grown to becoming one of the most popular custom print packaging yeah. companies in the UK. Well, Bloody hell. I think what you're doing is amazing, bro. Thank you, man. Really, really cool. Look, go and check them out on Instagram. You know, I think you, I think what's important for us today, though, is to see the man behind the business, not just necessarily talk about the business. Absolutely. I think that you, what you, are, you probably are what's so special about your company. I haven't met your brother. But um, if he's anything, is your brother? My, me, so me and my brother are 50, 50 percent. Yeah, business I haven't met your brother, but he's half as good as you. Then I'm sure he's a good fella. Yeah. Um, Has he got the same beard? No, he he does. We I look like the um, they call me the milkman's. <laughs> so uh, yeah, they call me the milkman's. So I don't, <laughs> I don't, I, I stick out like a sore thumb. Yeah. Did you? Because so you're you're from a Turkish Cypriot background. Um, that's right. Yeah. So uh, my both my parents are Turkish Cypriot, um, and uh, yeah, I grew let's, up in North London. Let's talk about Turkish Cypriot culture. How big is food? Well, in that, I mean, come um, on. Yeah. I mean, is it, it, it's it. It's just. It's all about food. Like, food and family and love. Yeah. I mean, I'll go around I, when I see my see my grandma. If I don't eat, it's almost like a, an offence. <laughs> <laughs> is it really? I, I'm not. Hang, I'm not hungry, <clears throat> Nan. You know. She's, that's what do you she's, mean? Yeah. yeah. Just don't take note. Yeah. And my mum's the same. You know. Amazing, bro. Yeah. Family, yeah. Yeah. Family of feeders. Yeah. Yeah. Big time feeders. Love that. We when I when I played. Um, when I, turned, when I played cricket in Australia when I, in 2012, I stayed with a, a Greek um, guy called Jim. Shout out to Jim. He's one of the most inspirational people I've ever met in my life. Um, very, very Greek. Right. When I used to go with him to his parents' house, she, his mum was baking everything. Yeah. No, I'm talking about big desserts, yeah. tray bakes. Flowing is. All day. She was in the kitchen all day making everything. And it was like you'd go in and you weren't even like you're saying, you weren't even hungry. And it just gave me like a little insight into it's totally different to our, our, my culture growing up in his household. Like his mum would be making things all day, everything. They had an allotment in the garden, she's whatever she'd be making, all sorts of different things. And he, the, the dad would be out there digging things up and planting. And it was like, yeah. I just remember looking at it like, wow, this is incredible. It was so important to them. It is. And, it's, and again, it's like, it's bringing people together. It's yeah, amazing man. what it's amazing what food does, right? Yeah. Whatever the food is, <laughs> that that experience between families and food and the emotions and we were yeah. talking about this at Wingfest, isn't it? Like yeah, what, it's incredible. <laughs> Getting you <know>. deep. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Do you know what? I don't even remember it talking about that. Okay, <laughs> Kem, Kem, Kem. <laughs> so as you don't know, I got very drunk on the Saturday Wingfest. It was a it was a great day. Yeah. And I remember on the Sunday morning and people come up to me and mate. I was going to say hello to people and I didn't remember it was the first time I'd seen him they were like mate you were drunk last night and I was like oh my god I was like did I see you he was like yeah we spoke to you about half an hour yeah we, we did we did we, we, we drank a lot on the Saturday didn't we it was a good day but it was a great day it was a great day shout out to Richard as well for, at Wingfest yeah I mean what an event and, and, and Dan at Gorilla like, what, what an event these the guys per, the on. perfect the perfect segue to our next topic that we can talk about stuff it we've just come off the back of Wingfest, Manchester. We were at Bristol together. Yep. And before that, we were at London together. Yep. It's a triple threat event. <laughs> and I'm just going to come out and say it. Obviously, I'm, inv I'm not I'm not I'm involved. I, I, I like to help them with their marketing. Unpaid, by the way. People come up to me saying, oh my God, how much are they paying you for this event? Not a, not a chuffing penny. Um, I just love being there. And for us, it's an important event to be at. It's a food, big food event. Mm. Like, 
You tell the people what an amazing, what, talk to them about the event. How cool is it? Like, I'm from, getting goosebumps from a, now from a vibe from a vibe <laughs> and an atmosphere's perspective. Honestly, the the Wingfest was such a vibe. Yeah, and it, and it, and you know, from London to Bristol to Manchester, you know, the the the, the atmosphere there, the traders, like the standard, like, the standard the, of the food, the standard of the food, the standard of the people. You know, like the people turn up, eat some amazing wings, have a dance, yeah, go and have a nice drink. There's, there's eat, nothing like it. Eat some more. I don't think I've been to an event quite quite. I don't. I mean, I asked, I asked Richard this as well. I said to him, like, how, it, there's, there's nothing like Wingfest, is there? Like, there's nothing like it's, it. It's totally family-friendly too. And yeah. one thing I did see is a lot of couples as well, the sort of event you can go to with your husband or your wife or your boyfriend, kids. your girlfriend or, and yeah, your kids. And kids yeah. Eat some, some of the best chicken wings in the UK, which again we'll come to, the, the cheap, nasty cut of a chicken that no one ever wants. <laughs> is spun that into a festival, celebrating that. Again, about music, culture... Fast street eats. Yeah. You know, and I think, like, chicken wings aren't just the, the hot wings you get from your local fried chicken shop anymore. The, right. the standard has moved it's on. big time. And they're, like, mentally, like, the flavours and the, the things they put, all the different things they put on them and how every single vendor is different. It's just it, it's Jess, it's, 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 it's elite. It, mm-hmm. they, it's elite level of cooking. It is. Mm. It really is. Well, let's... Let's look. People again think that we're on some kind of sponsorship program of Chicken George. It's not not far from the case. That guy. Let's talk about that guy for a second. Go on. About his wings. Jesse's talking about what you do with a chicken wing. Yeah, mental. <sighs> Where do you even start? Ex top chef turned family business, fried chicken. Spun it into wings. These wings are romantic to eat. They wake your face up. It's stunning. It's yeah, shout out to Ribman. Shout out to yeah. Ribman for the sources that he's collabed with this weekend. But, you know... It blows my head off <clears throat> every time. We're not, talk, <laughs> we're not talking, you know, crappy. We're, this is just... It is exceptional. Like, and I, and I, do you know what was cool about the last two events we went to? The standard of everyone else is now raising as well. Yeah, I mean... I think the gap is shortening between the big guys and the small guys now. Yeah, which it's, is great. We Listen, you need, you need competition in life. That's what drives us all, right? That's what that's what pushes us all to succeed is is competition. The rising tide raises all boats. There we go. That's it's true. That's isn't lovely. It? That is. To get we'll rise together, you know. Yeah, we will. And you know, like you had people like the source. Yeah. I, you know the source, um, London and and Bristol. You know, I don't think the source. You know. They weren't the most popular. They weren't on the radar. They weren't on the radar. That's yeah. it. That's a lovely way of putting it. They weren't on the radar. Come Manchester, I spoke to them guys. Which they've done some tweaking and changing and stuff. And tweaking and changing, and <coughs> before you know it, you know they 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 they're winning. What did the, what did they win? Um, the source judges, won. I think. When they were involved in the judges. The source won uh, judges wild wing. Yeah. Judges' Choice Wild Wing. Really? Yeah. What was that Wild Wing? Do you remember? Um, well, I, 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 it, it, I, I, I had it. Was, it. It was creamy. Yes. Yeah, I remember it from Bristol. And, and it had it had lovely garnish. And an amazing garnish. It felt clean on it. It did have amazing garnish. Didn't it, it did. That it purple. Did. I remember yeah, looking at the picture. I took a photo of it. Yeah, yeah. took a photo of it. <laughs> and it had this like <clears throat> tail end warmth come through, and it was like a real pleasure to eat. Yeah. But for me, it's just great when you walk about. You're saying people, you know, people say, "Hey, man, you know, what's, what is your tip for the day?" And I say, "Listen, I say, what, what have you been today? What do you think?" And you get the vibe, you get the, that man on the ground feeling about who's exciting people. Yeah. And a lot of people were saying this was as well. It was they really, were. It was like people aren't just saying it by chance. They they're, they're talking with their they're talking with their feet. You know, where, where they've been and what they've actually tried. Absolutely. Absolutely. And sometimes because at Wingfest. The big players do get a lot of people queuing up and things like that. Sometimes the smaller places that don't have the bigger queues, more people go to. Yeah. Because they can just get to them and they're like, oh, we can get some wings there. And then they end up being banging. And also all these wing vendors that all they do really as well, when they're not really busy, is go around and try everyone else's. So you think you've got people from all over the country trying each other's wings and they are going to get better. Yeah. They're going to be like, oh, look oh at that. God, look oh, what look he's doing down there. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, yeah exactly. Have I you mean. tried these with? And do you know what as well? The map type, obviously, we, we, were, we were out the back of Chicken George, obviously, they were friends. And even even the, the Chris and the team were having wings brought in from other places. And yeah. we, we were talking about them, about other people's wings. And you know, like, he said, oh, I like this one, but I didn't really like that one. And for this reason, this reason. 
It's, everyone loves to try them. It's like a little, yeah. little sub competition. People get so like, I suppose you get so tunnel vision. You think, oh yeah, that's really good because we get it all the time when people are like, you need to go to this kebab shop. It's the best kebab ever. And I'm like, no, you've only been to that kebab shop. It's, the, it's yeah. not the best mm. ever. And we go, and it's terrible. Yeah, yeah. and you and <clears throat> when you get that experience from everyone from all over the country, like you wouldn't be able to do that quickly, yeah. would you? Anywhere and else? Exactly. And like, get this right. On the Saturday, you know, Chris was like really anxious about his his uh, wild wing you know the the famous mango rubicon wing and then oh did he take the mango one did he yeah he, he took did. the mango to manchester ah, he took the mango okay. to manchester and on the saturday you know um he wasn't even in judge's choice for the mango wing really no and then on the sunday he, he won got pe people's he choice won people's yeah. choice it's weird isn't it you know and um but it happened it, it happens and obviously rib man's wing the buffalo wing obviously didn't Look, we can't we can't be a legitimate food. The, the people's choice. They didn't they won the judges, didn't they? They won so yeah, so the Buffalo Wing won the judges' choice. Won the judges, but they didn't get the they got the second choice. They on got people's second. choice. And was it Gert? No, no Gert Bok. wasn't at Manchester. Box shop. Oh. Yeah, the box shop. Oh, yeah. Shout out to Box Shop. Shout box shop. Big, big shout yeah. out to Jamie at Box Shop. They're just such a wicked They're bunch a vibe, of aren't they? Yeah, like, they really? are. They really are. So we did it, we actually did a <clears> out of in Bristol, out of all the places that were rocking people's tongues as well, the same what I was talking about when you say, where have you been, where have you been? At Bristol, the vibe was about box shop. And uh, it's funny, that momentum. It's funny, when the, when the, when the ball gets in motion, mm. that ball carried on to Manchester. Yeah. B Bosh, they won the Buffalo. Yeah. Now, we wouldn't be a legitimate food podcast if we didn't address this. I think for the rib man and Chris, it must have been a bit of a hit, you know, like to, to lose to these guys. Not say lose, they came second, but we all know they're the, they're the titans of the game. Yeah, they've won Bristol and London, and I'm going to be honest. For me, they were leagues ahead. To have someone come up the from and cause an upset, let's be honest. Yeah, this is, it was, this is a big upset. Yeah. It is a big upset. Of course it is. No, I, of course it is. I mean, you know, <laughs> Ribman like he's a passionate fellow. Anyone you know? that's met, met him and speaks to him, like, you know, you get goosebumps when you hear that guy tell his story and, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. and about his, and about his journey in life, you know? Mm. So, um, I just think, I just, he, he, he is an upset. He is an upset. But, but, just but, like though, the upset was when Chicken George lost, uh, uh, won to Wingman's and they'd won every year for like, that was a big upset, yeah. Five uh, years, uh, five years in a row. something. It is what it is, isn't it? A little bit, I think, yeah. <laughs> One thing I will say though, obviously I'm, you know, I'm a, I'm a big Chicken George fan, but I've really enjoyed spending time with those box shop lads um, over the last couple of weekends. We've seen them. Mm. They're cool. They're funky. They're fresh. They're they're really excitable. Um, <laughs> really excitable, like a puppy. No, <laughs> they, 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 they are. They're, they're wild. <laughs> they're that, fun. Well they're trained. fun. That's what I'm. That's I think, uh, their, their energy. They off are. Me. They are, man. Yeah. They're happy. They're happy. They're doing what they love. That that wild wing they did, Doctor Drizzle, like with that Doctor Pepper sauce, Doctor D. Mm -hmm. Not nuts on top of it. That was a that was sweet, but it wasn't too much. You could chow into them. I want ten of them delivered to me right now. And the li and the little can <laughs> of Dr Pepper. Yeah, that's I such mean, a touch, wasn't it? Yeah, that, they like really put care and attention into like and that matters, doesn't making it? Making it an experience. Yeah. That's that tangible thing. You can't put your finger on that a bit of magic that we love so much. When you've when, yeah. you, when you know they've done that, it means they care and they love what they're doing. Of course they do. So, well, yeah. look, that's the that's again that's what is the magic of Wingfest, right? Look at those traders. You know, they're there because they love being in that industry. Yeah. They're there to grow their brands. They're not there thinking about how and much money they're no, earning. A lot of no, them lose exactly, money. You know? yeah. A lot of them lose money. Exactly. Shout out to, again, shout out to someone else we spent a lot of time with again, Jazz from Poor Boys. Now, oh. they put on spectacle. a spectacle of a production. <laughs> it's, a, it's a one hell of a production. I said to Jazz, I'm like, like, you know, I shouldn't be asking these questions. I said, have you done all right this weekend, mate? And he's, he said, do you know what, Matt? I've put my team up in the Hilton. Yep. I've brought a big team, a big production with me. Yep. Yeah. They'd have lost. I'm not going to say how much he lost, but he lost a lot. But for him, he, they want to be at Wingfest. It's so, that kind of event, you know, like if, if anyone's watching this now, seen our content, probably you've probably seen the Love Wing Challenge content over <laughs> and everything else. <laughs> yeah. People pouring milk on their head. We'll come to that. Yeah. We'll come to that. Yeah, okay. If, right. you, if, you, if you're interested and you like your food, I cannot recommend it enough. It's about twenty pound a ticket. Um, yeah, value for lot, money. But yeah, I'm sorry, but the lot. value for money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is but what is it like a pound a wing all day? And yeah. most people, most people have between ten and fifteen, maybe even twenty wings if you stretch it over the full day. So worst case scenario, you're going to spend forty quid plus your drinks. Yeah. Maybe ten pound for twenty pounds worth of drinks. Look, 
It's not too bad. It's but a good day. It's a good day. It's yeah. a good day. It is a good day. All right, little shout out. I think the tickets for Manchester, uh, for London are back on sale already. Yeah, they right. are. I got an email about it the other day. Yeah, it's me too. I saw it on their socials. So if you want to go again, if you want to go again or you haven't been before, go and check them out on, um, on Instagram. Follow the links. You can get your tickets for London now. I think it's the first time they've ever put them on sale this early. Yeah, well, I mean, we, we, we CP should be sponsoring. Yeah, good for you, man. But yeah. How was that for you? All right, cool. Let's talk about that. How was that sponsoring such a major event over three cities as well? Um, it was a great season. I mean, so when I when I met Richard and that, it, we, we, we click pretty quickly because we all just like him. He's a very clickable sort of guy. Though, he is, he? exactly. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. He's a great fella. And, um, you know, like, it was, it was at a time where we was thinking, do we do trade shows and stuff like that? And I thought, I'm just not a trade show sort of guy. You know, we wear our heart on our sleeves. We are who we are, you know. Yeah. You know, love me or whatever, you know. But And I thought, I just don't want to do trade shows. Trade shows is a bit... Um, it's just, it's just, it's just, it's just, just people, hacks, it's people it? walking around wanking each other off all day and then just, you know. And what, I'm going to stand there and just, you know, and look at someone opposite me trying to do the same thing. You know what I mean? So <laughs> I thought, no, you know what, forget that. And, um, you know, sponsoring Wingfest was just like the, the best decision I made. I mean, I've made great friends. You know, the networking as well. Net, as the networking and just obviously getting our brand out there. But, you know, we, we, we're a good company to work with. But it's also because, you know, like all the traders who a lot of them are customers of mine, you know, we're all young entrepreneurs, man. Yeah. We're all trying to yeah. just make our way, you know, and, and, and that's what it is. And, and, and it's the rise of the entrepreneur, in yeah. my opinion. Yeah. You know, it's our time now. It's the, it's, it's the little guy that mm. is shining. And, that, and to be honest with you, that's like... You know, I, I didn't say this earlier, but, you know, it's congrats on to you guys about your figures. Do you know what I mean? Like, see, uh, people don't people don't see the, 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 the so much the, the behind the camera stuff yeah, like I, I would see, you know. And you're a husband and wife team, man. Yeah, I know. Do you know what I mean? And like, the, the way you two are together as well is so great. Like, you, you know, he, he's you're, he's a sweetheart, really. Isn't he? <laughs> he's a proper gentleman. I think, I think Jess would disagree, but... Well, <laughs> yeah. yeah, but... You know, I'll do my worst. But it's it's that kind of vibe, right? Yeah. I mean, look look at this network that we're building, and, and what are we? We just all we're just all very normal people mm. from normal humble backgrounds, you know. Well, and, you're, we're uh, about the same sort of age, aren't we, Ken? Are yeah, 32, 33? Yeah, I'm I'm nineteen eighty eight. And you're yeah, eight. I'm eighty seven. Yeah. Say you're nineteen. Like, <laughs> yeah. Bloody yeah. Hell. So we're, we're cut from a similar age, you know. Like if you um didn't have an easy path, we spoke about how to get to where you are now. I'm I'm very much the same. Yeah. You know, so it's nice to be rubbing shoulders with you guys. Uh, and I actually had this uh, chat at Wingfest at Bristol. I remember, you know, when there's moments you take a step back. Yeah. You know, everyone thinks, you might think I was there for money and this and getting, not it's not the, not the case. I just love being there for the food and the content. And at Bristol, something else happened. I remember talking to Dan and Richard. Now, like me and Richard now, for example, we're just fucking like mates. Yeah. I love him. When I see him during the day and I just not I just look at him, just give him a hug. Like, I say, yeah. congratulations, man. Like, what you've achieved is amazing. I've must him that a hundred times. Yeah. And then I meet like, <laughs> but then now, like, I'm really good mates with Richard. This guy's a, this guy's a ninja at what he does. He's super successful. But now I'm, I'm mates with him and then... No, you, I've said, met, I've met, you said Richard twice. Sorry. <clears throat> Do you mean Dan? Yeah. With well, Richard. Both. With Richard. Now, obviously, now we're mates. He's a ninja. And then through that, now I've met Dan. Yeah, that's good. Now I've met Dan and I start hearing his story. But I've done quite a lot of work for Wingfest. So obviously, you know, he wants to talk to me and I'm, he's a nice fellow and there's a mutual respect there. And mm. then he tells me his story and I'm like, wow, I'm sitting with an, I'm sitting with an industry giant here. He does, I'm going to drill off a couple, like things like Goodwood, Glastonbury. Yep. The event you see when you turn up is put up by Guerrilla Events, which Henley is Dan's. as well. And like, oh, like, really? Yeah. The regard, yeah. It does it. It does it all. This guy's a this guy's another industry titan, and he's like, I'm rubbing shoulders with people, and I meet you, and I'm, now I'm friends with Chris. Thing, and I just I'm feel so blessed that we've managed to meet such inspirational people on the journey. So it's crazy. Yeah, it's really special. It Enough, is I special. Needed, needed something I could pick up the phone. Um, Getting goosebumps. Do man. you know what? It's, and and the, another thing is, <laughs> the thing is, Richard actually said this to another food blogger about me when I was standing there. He said, what's special about Matt is? And he said, he comes with no agenda. I'm not asking for, you won't ever see this guy. You think I'm a money grabbing like pig or whatever. It's not the case. I go with no agenda. Um, just happy to be there. Look, I've when seen I, it I, firsthand, man. Yeah, when I was speaking to Dan, I'm not asking him for, 
can, this and this and this. I just want to listen. I'm like a sponge, and I just it, it was. I think it was a. It was amazing to meet such great people. You know. Yeah. Yeah. No agenda. Just just turn up and be present and like have good have good energy. I think it will carries you a long way. Yeah, it does. And also, like for me to be there with you as like a friend. Yeah. You know, just there to enjoy the day. You know, like the the amount of people that obviously come up to you and say yeah. hi and stuff like that. But you know, look at you. You touch these people. Yeah, man, it's, like, it's, it's amazing. It is, and I, for me to just sort of stand stand there and hear how much you make people happy actually yeah i think like, we've had a lot with it's, it's been a difficult year for a lot of people and to, to give someone a, a, a 10 minutes of their day as a bit of yeah. a bit of a smile time watching someone eat some yeah. food and having a laugh is we're blessed yeah it was it was it was a special day in it yeah, special it season great. actually yeah you know weather held out for them all didn't it well apart from the sunday in london oh man, god yeah i mean that was like tropical storm 2.0 <laughs> yeah. deluxe that geezer, that geezer in the canoe outfit got a, got yeah. a lovely didn't he He's fucking that was yeah. i forgot about that should have bought a jet ski like it, yeah. was. <laughs> it was so bad he's yeah. standing in a queue and you just had like a river yeah. You know when you queue up all day though, and it, once you're in the queue, you're like, I'm staying. Well, yeah, yeah you're exactly. that British stubbornness. <laughs> because it wasn't cold, it was yeah. just wet. Yeah. It was just wet. You know. And it was fucking wet, wasn't it? And it, it <laughs> oh my God, It yeah. was so wet. People stayed there, didn't they? They did. Like, people stayed there, and as soon as the rain would stop, everyone would be like, go! <laughs> yeah. Go, go get the wing. That was at the Olympic Stadium, wasn't it? So there's obviously a lot of cover there, to be fair. Yeah, there was. Massive event. Yeah, a lot of cover, which is good. So not, I think people... We all got wet, but there was, there was plenty oh, of yeah. shelter. Yeah, there was. And plenty the toilets. Shelter. The toilets. Great toilets. Were, plenty yeah. of shelter. A few lobbies and a few foyers we were to dive into. Yeah. It didn't affect people too bad. No, it right. didn't. They were still queuing for two hours. I think they're going to do like a, maybe even Birmingham next year, I think, maybe. Oh, They're breaking news, I'm yeah. not sure. Yeah, room, Birmingham. Rumour rumor has it. And we were talking to maybe Newcastle. Oh, that would be good. Hang on, I think you suggested Newcastle. <laughs> I think you, you were like, like, we're doing it. So, so I think. Are you like, Richard, I love Newcastle, can we go there? <laughs> I think I've mentioned Newcastle to you. Yeah. About 20 times in the last sort of two weeks. <laughs> you're, you're putting it out there. Yeah. What's you're your connection with Newcastle? I don't know, it's just it's one just of my. It's just a great city. It's just a great it? city. Yeah. It's just a great city. It's a great city. Yeah. Very the people hilly, are amazing. Though. Very hilly. Mm. <laughs> All right, Ken, let's talk food. What's your favourite takeaway? What's your favourite food? And what do you what what gets you off? What do you love? Um, I'm 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 quite eclectic with my food choice. And I think okay. that's the best way to be. Um, what do I? Oh man, that is a good question. That is a good question. Listen, look, you can't go wrong with a really good quality kebab. In the store. <laughs> I knew right. you were going to say, gonna say that. I didn't think you were going to say kebab. I, I love that. Knew. I want it to be predictable, yeah. but unpredictable at the same time. <laughs> well, you just can't go wrong. The, the kebab games move forward as well, isn't it? Big time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah big time. I mean, Cooking look. Looking over the hot coals and stuff, it doesn't matter. You know, it's, it's gone on the days of the, I'll say, terrible Donna meat. But we still get I it. I still love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, some of the kebabs are knocking about these days are absolutely incredible. Yeah, yeah. The, 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 the takeaway sec, I mean, look, the takeaway sector is the. It's the fastest growing sector in the UK right now, man. Mm. And there's many aspects. Isn't that true, by the way? Bless up to the takeaway. Like, of the game is moving on. Incredible. That's not what it used to be, is it? No. A takeaway mm. used to be like kebabs, burgers, no. chips, yeah. cheesy chips in polystyrene containers. Now that you can rock up to these random little places and get your, get your um, fine dining takeaway. Yeah. yeah. Basically. Is, Great sources, yeah. high quality products. Yeah. And, and, you know, like a lot of this, I mean, I think, I think culture in this country was heading towards that way. People were more busy, less inclined to cook. So you get the rise of, mm -hmm. of, of more food options, you know, yeah. fast food, but at a higher quality. But maybe the pandemic accelerated that as well. Yeah, definitely. Because you know? um, obviously it's, it's crazy. And the, and, the, the and, the, and the rise of the delivery platforms. Basically, now with things like Deliveroo, you can get you can get it brought Deliveroo, Uber Eats, yeah, and, what, and whatever else brought to you, yeah, fairly quick, yeah, fairly on time, roughly. I know they do a lot, and some there's the bad bad ones, but it's, it's such a slick model now. You can be literally sat at home, in thirty minutes time, you can have a gaucho brought yeah. to you, brought to your lap. Yeah, you, you can know? literally dream of. You can just think of the food you want. And yeah, exactly. you, we've got yeah, yeah. we've got a friend in London that. Um, Oh, yeah. We were talking about this, and he was like, he was like oh, "What is it like where you live on delivering that?" I'm like, oh, not many. It's just, you know, it's just it was just coming around it. And he goes, "On my app, I've got 700 
possibilities. Seven. He was like, I went through every one as well. I wanted to make sure I it's got like the right It's like trying dinner. to pick something on Netflix, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. So, oh, that, is, that. that is your not night, that. picking something. Yeah. yeah. You never actually get to the um, to the end result. Yeah, you know. <laughs> but the, the delivery apps are good as well, because if you're starting a takeaway, you can be instantly in everyone's pockets without even having yeah. to do a lot either. It's, um, it does come with a price. It does. It's about twenty five percent. Thirty percent, maybe twenty five. Yeah. yeah, depending on your. Yeah, channel. but you know, it's the way the world is going, isn't it? Look at Amazon. You know, look at the high street. Unfortunately. You know. Yeah. I okay. want it now. Yeah. Yeah. So I want it now. I mean, listen, guys. Like, I, you know, as I told you, you know, I spent a lot of time in the Far East, and um, I've been at a hotel, right? And uh, the people that work for me over there have said to me, "Do you do you want anything?" And I've been like, "Yeah, I'll have something," <laughs> and. They'll go, go to your window. I'll be like, all right. I go to my window. There's a bloody drone outside Shush. my window. No. Carrying my takeaway. No. And I, I, I was like, all right. I took it. <laughs> this is like, this oh, is a bit much, yeah. This is like Terminator salvation. What is going on here? <laughs> anyway, so I, I, I took my, I took my takeaway off the drone and then the drone, the drone disappeared. And I, it was fruit, to be honest with you. Fruit? It was dragon fruit. Fruit. Yeah, it was like late at night. And uh, but yeah, you know, just little drones flying around with dragon yeah. fruits. Yeah, <laughs> literally. Well, you get the little ones in Milton Keynes, don't you? They've got Starship the ship bots or whatever they're the called. little bots that drive around with your takeaway. It, it's happening. Do you think do you, every there's that film, isn't there? Do you know where they? Um, I can't remember what it's called now. Where everyone just becomes really fat and they don't move because everything gets brought to them. We could be starting that point, that sort of <laughs> movement. Just I, <laughs> I could be like the original. <laughs> Look back in history, but like, yeah, that, that guy, <laughs> he started that shit. Yeah, maybe, maybe not. <laughs> Hope not. <laughs> Hope not. There's like you that you soon won't like the Amazon um, supermarket. Do you know that's, where you just walk amazing, in? Though. Yep. Put it in your basket, and then you yeah, can just walk out. When you take it off the shelf, it registers, and you put it back on. And it takes it out of your basket. Are you, yeah. Are you, do you? I mean, what side of the fence do you sit on, though? Is it, do you f do you feel comfortable with how quickly the world is moving in that direction or not or does it sit easy with you? I mean, I thought in, in that for me in that circumstance, I'd love that just to walk. Now, think about your think about your time is precious. Yeah. It's all we've got in this world. Anything that helps speeds up the, your your dead time in those situations. I love all that stuff. Mm. Standing in a fucking queue <laughs> waiting for Doreen to fucking scan your shit. Like I don't like going to the self checkout. That always shouts at me. <laughs> Taking a trolley through self <laughs> checkout. Yeah. One item at a time, please. <laughs> Put it on the bag area. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Please place your item in the bagging area. Um, yeah. I think you just there's got to be a bit of both. I think it all can't go one way. Sometimes I like a chat with someone, but then half the time I don't like talking to people at all. So yeah, I'd love that where I could just walk in, walk out, don't have to converse with anyone. Do you think you're cooking this though? We. We yeah, never cook. We really well, rarely cook. But, I mean, I know, aside from obviously Bad what you do is your day job. Right. How many pans you got, Jess? <laughs> right, can I, right, no, pans? Like, hey, no, hang, stop, oh, stop, 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 stop. How many stop. pans? Why do so, you assume they're mine and not ours? I'm going <laughs> to allude to something that was a topic of much laughing. <laughs> we were talking about cooking, and Kem just came out with the fact. He lost his... I have three pans. You, ha you have? No, you... No, you have three, three pans. pans. No, I'm talking like... And a wok. Saucepans, uh, pans, like frying pans and... You have three pan. in total. It actually started because I told them that I lost my confidence in poaching eggs. <laughs> Flipping egg, I'm glad <laughs> I was We were talking there about eggs week. and he was like, I Leave just you lost two my alone confidence. Yeah, because weekend. Matt thought... I said to Matt, look, I made, I made the next sandwich this morning. And he was like, what did you have? It scrambles. And then he suddenly thought... Who no, that's stupid. Who eats a scrambled egg sandwich, man? <laughs> yeah. you, you can, though, but the, the next sandwich is fried, isn't it? Yeah. 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 But anyway, and then I turn around and said, and then he goes to me, do you like poached eggs? And I was like, yeah, I love them, but, you know, recently um, I lost my confidence <laughs> with uh, poaching eggs. So it's been a long time since I've poached an egg. <laughs> <laughs> What happened? What, yeah, talk you know, us through. What, how did you, did What's you, your game plan with a poached egg? Well, just one, you know, like I was going through this great period of poaching eggs. Yeah, you right? do get them, don't you? <laughs> <I> was, <laughs> and every Saturday morning, I was, you know, like looking at Hannah, I was like, you want some poached eggs, sweetheart? And she was like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, making these poached eggs and that, and then just one day, they wouldn't 
they wouldn't stay together. Oh, yeah, you yeah, You know, yeah. and then uh, since then, I just can't get them to stay. I just don't know what's going on. So I just said, that's it. I ain't, I ain't poaching eggs anymore. <laughs> that's it? Yeah. Bravo. From me to you, man to man, I think you need to get back on the horse. I'm going to try. Do you, uh, do you want me to talk you through how I do it? Well, I think everybody, oh. I, I think that's it. It's, yeah, go for it. <laughs> hey, what are you going to say? Everyone does it the same? No, 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 no. Everyone's got a different techers, yeah. haven't they? I used to sometimes do them in just, the microwave just, and then just say, it exploded. I've never seen you make a poached egg before, by the way, so it's not, don't think you're sitting with <laughs> poached, egg, poached egg queen of the game right now. Um, you just bag me out. Jess, I, I, I'm going to I'm an honest. I'm an honest. For you. you make the best scrambled eggs. <laughs> What's your going in? How do you make scram- your scrambled eggs? Scrambled eggs, I always do it in a pan. Do you do it in a pan? <laughs> well, this was another point of discussion. A pan, high, but what's sided? A high sided pan. You could do it in any pan. I just sometimes do it in a frying pan, sometimes a saucepan. Yeah, yeah I do it in a pan as well. Saucepan. Yeah. But no. my family, growing up, my family frying always pan. did it in the microwave. <laughs> yeah, and then my dad used to do that. Yeah, like Christmas morning. Do you know, like, we always had scrambled egg, smoked salmon or something Christmas morning. They always used to do it in the microwave. So and then I was like, no, I like doing it in a pan. So that's how we do it. But poached eggs. You just put a bit of vinegar in the water. Right. Do you do that? No. I hate vinegar. You, no, you don't hate. taste it. But I think that's what binds it. Do you reckon? I'll try it. I've never Guys, tried it. If you're still watching right now or still listening in your car, hello, what are you still doing? Jesus Christ. <laughs> Please um, get in the comments and let us know your how, best how, how to poach your egg. poached egg recipe. Like, is there, is there you a, spin is there it? A, you I've, get never, it. I've never made one. You get it to boil and then you put it to simmer and you then you spin it. Salt in there, pepper in there. But no, I tried no, the spinning no. I tried the spinning method and then it I'm quite I'm quite heavy handed and I'm spinning it and then <laughs> Not when the egg's in it. Like no, some just, whirlpool. Just, he's low on confidence. He's heavy handed. I'm trying to help I it. I can see how this is going wrong. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but no, we actually don't cook at all. I can I say something really Once nice? Once a week? Like we, 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 you know, like, growing up, we'd, we'd always, I'd always have, like, not always, but, you know, your meat and two veg and so this really hearty, wholesome cooking with gravy and, you know, that type of thing. I just, I miss it so much. And the other day, you said, should we, should we have a meal at home? And I was like, oh, my God, I'd love to. I wanted pie and mash. Pie and mash, oh, carrots and... A bit just, of gravy. Yeah, man, it just, it just warms my cockles, you know? Do you put mustard in your mash? Mustard, you can, but I, I'm, I prefer it, like, just super buttery and just, like, and I'd prefer to, if we're going to go an extra level with my mash, I'd like to go put it through a ricer, so it's so it's completely um, smooth. That's um, that's that's serious mash over there. <laughs> Honestly, it'll change your life. A ricer, okay, it's I'll so try. easy as well. Like, I'll try you know, anything. Mashing really takes it out of you, but ricings. We've got good. a um, like a handheld one. You put one potato at a time to push it through, and you just squirt some more out and just knock it off into the thing. It makes it so smooth, and it allows it the uptake of butter and cream, whatever, to really. Push forward. Mash is a... I love my mash. Yeah. It's a, it, it forms part of that hearty meal, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. We um, we made... Who's the... I can't remember the chef's name. Fucking hell. The guy with 30-odd Michelin stars. He's dead now. But he's, he, um, he has got the... Michael Rue. Yeah. Michelle, no, Michelle Rue. Michelle Rue. Michelle Rue. So he has, yeah. he has his, his... Apparently, he makes the, the best mash ever he's, in his restaurants. It's incredible. People go there and eat the mash and just like have, have a faint with love. <laughs> I got the recipe. I thought I'm gonna make some. Do you know what it's it's two to three potatoes to batter. Oh my god. So every you, you mix it slowly, don't you Jesse? You put it through a ricer and you it's every uh, every one potato is two pieces of butter and it's like it is crazy. Wow. That's it's uh, like it's in it's butter heavy. Yeah. So um do you reckon we're gonna have much mash at Christmas time with all the lorry driver shortages? Oh, yeah. And so apparently the thing is, Boris is now, as of the news this morning, trying to save Christmas for two, twofold. Come on, Bojo. Because of the infections and whatnot. And this is the big one, guys. I Hold on to your seats. <laughs> Brexit, lack of labour, no turkeys. <laughs> yeah. No turkeys, Cute. yeah. No turkeys. Cute turkey noise. <clears throat> I mean... I don't know what to say. I mean, is it... It goes from bad to worse, doesn't it? First, yeah. first is petrol. Can't get no petrol. There's then, no drivers. No iron brew. Then no hey, listen, iron brew. Listen, there's <laughs> yesterday iron brew. Now at a shortage as well because they can't get out there and do their thing. Listen, I'm worried about that. We, you know, I okay, love iron brew. There's a few. You get a few bit, bit, bit of a petrol shortage. <laughs> All see what happens. Us. Let's see what happens when we upset the Scots like that. Yeah, <laughs> they're coming. They're coming. They're coming. They're, they're going to be start. They're going to be fuming. <laughs> Proper. 
that would be that would be do a you revolt. Think, do you think this is just like the start? Do you think this is just how are we going to have like a bit of a shift in things that we're used to that actually are going to dwindle out? We're not we're not going to get them anymore. You certainly, know, certainly looking that way, isn't it? Or like the, how the media portrays it to us. Everyone's got that mentality now where they panic yeah. and they well, the, freak out. Like and the they, toilet roll. The toilet brigade, yeah. I mean, look, it, it's all part of it. I mean, there's a, there, there, is, there clearly is a bit of a media agenda of mm. causing a bit of panic and hysteria in the UK. I mean, there isn't even a petrol shortage. No. <laughs> there isn't a petrol shortage. Isn't it like... I actually heard it this morning. LBC, shout out to LBC, good, good, a good program. There was twenty garages in the nation that struggled or had to shut. And please don't quote me if I'm misquoting. By the way, I apologise, but it was something very low key like that, and it got taken totally out of proportion. And and everyone is just brimming their cars like morons, which is not leaving not leaving any fuel for people who really need it. Yeah. So you have got these people that will probably fill up five quid a week. Yeah, no. they're now filling up their cars, filling up jerry cans, and like causing mayhem. And then you know, it was like when we left Manchester, we we was like, well, I got what we're gonna do. What we're gonna do? I got <laughs> I got a hundred miles left on the on on the trip. You know, in the tank. I was I had to say because I wasn't there, and I said to Matt, I said I would. You'd be better off getting it on the motorway rather than in like a local it's town. It's exactly the same as the toilet rolls. If you only took what you need when you needed it. Yeah. It'd be plenty for everyone. Yeah. If you if everyone takes everything they can of all at the same time, it's of course it's gonna run out. Exactly. It's yeah. it's not rocket science, is it? I it's mean, just, just it's this that panic. It's crazy. And that but the biggest thing is I'm worried about the turkey situation. I love turkeys. Yeah, Christmas true. Ken, I really people rate me, turkey though, so I wouldn't mind. I'll, uh, listen, I'd have a good chicken. At Christmas, you've got to have your turkey. I'm sorry, I know people, a lot of people say I don't like it. Then you're cooking it wrong. It's delicious when you do it right. Christmas you know, dinner for me is my sorry, Jess. Christmas dinner for me is my favourite meal ever. Mm. You're sat with your family or your friends or your loved ones, whoever it might be. You've been for a difficult year, a great year. It's a time to reflect. It's Christmas for fuck's sake. Yeah. That meal is like a celebration of the last year, and I think without turkeys, there's going to be punch ups in the street. And and what else there might not be? There might there, there exactly, else? yeah. Like it, so, I think the turkey sorry can to interrupt. The turkey situation is due to do with Brexit and they're not having enough labour. Is that right, Callum? That's what the news said. So it's not about having the labour. Where else is that going to affect? Just like you said, the, the potatoes, the veg. Of course, well, of course it's swear. definitely affecting the veg. Because, you know, it was the, the labour to pick the veg is not there right now. Simple. Brexit. Mm. Yeah, Brexit. Bre- <laughs> yeah. Stop just saying Brexit. Well, do, you know what, do you know who caused Brexit? <laughs> Brexit. Carol Baskin. <laughs> that bitch. <laughs> that bitch, Carol Baskin. That bitch. Well, that takes me back to lockdown one. <laughs> yeah. But last Christmas, it was like, yeah, we're going to, you know... Cr- what is yeah, it? Like what is happening to the world? Like, yeah, and then this Christmas, there's no turkey. My God, could you remember? Yeah, no that? family, no, like, no yeah. family and friends, and no fa- like celebrations. Yeah. Listen, <laughs> now we're gonna have. Do no you remember food. what he was saying? Is you maybe as be with your family? Fuck off! <laughs> I think everyone did it, didn't they? <laughs> <laughs> You're only allowed this amount of people. Shut up! <laughs> Get round here, Nan. Give us a cuddle. Well, you never know when know. you're gonna Some not see. To- look, it's just. <clears throat> I I agree. You, yeah. know, you know, you never know when you're going to see nice someone again. Christmas. It's yeah, exactly. It'd be nice this Christmas to not have to. Because you think last year we didn't have any like Christmas parties. We didn't see anyone. You know, we were able to shop, weren't we? We were able to shop for presents. But yeah. I, I remember dropping presents off to like our family, like on their doorstep, being like, oh, "Merry Christmas." Okay, it's just so later. wrong, isn't it? It's yeah, just it so wrong. Nice. Right. And like Christmas, can Christmas is obviously subjective to however you choose to spend it, right? But yeah. what is the the main thing about Christmas, you know, in the modern day, is just being with the people you love. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter if you're religious or whatever, it's just, a bit, yeah. yeah. It doesn't matter if Having you've got... a couple got, of days. Yeah, it doesn't matter yeah. if you've got loads of food or a little bit of food, you know? Yeah. It's just about mm-hmm. being with the people you love. And if you start affecting that, then... Yeah. You know what I mean? It, what are we going to become? Some kind of soulless society? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. exactly. Like, we'll do know, know what I mean? the checkout, take an hour. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but but doreen has got a family too, Jess. <laughs> Talking of Christmas. Do you think we've spoken about the most amount of Christmas at all podcasts this early in the year? <laughs> I saw 
my first mince pie in the garage uh, the other day. You know when you lock eyes with the first mince pie in the yeah. garage? Yeah. That's when you know. It's time. Well, it's time. Okay. It's, it's, it's nearly October. It's yeah, we're, we're on the home Winter straight, Wonderland. aren't we? Winter Wonderland will start soon, you know. <clears throat> I've never actually been to Winter Wonderland. Have we were not? saying we were going to do a few um, Christmas yeah. markets and stuff this year. I'd rather do some Christmas markets, go to Berlin or something. Or oh, yeah, yeah, they do yeah. some good you ones You know, like... You should win at Wonderland. You should go there. Shout out to Love Churros, Jake, um, owner of Love Churros. Um, go there, like he, you know, he, it's, a, it's a good day out. Yeah. I've always wanted to. I've just never been taken. Go ice skating. <laughs> yeah. Would you take her to win at Wonderland, mate? You can't go ice skating, Kim. No, we have a we have a history of it. <laughs> well, I think you've got. To tell me now. We actually decided not to do Winter Wonderland. I don't know why, but we went to Somerset House to do. Oh, ice, ice skating. skating. Yeah. Really romantic, yeah. though, ice skating, yeah. Really romantic. <laughs> and so I was... She's, do you know when there's She's just, not been the same since. I haven't. Do you know when there's... So we were getting our skates on, and this bloke, um, like, jabbed his skate into me, and I was like, oh, sorry. Like, do you know when you just keep... Was that one twat? Keep the, bumping yeah. into someone, and yeah. I was like, oh, okay. Basically, you know, he, was, he, he was definitely, like, drunk. Like, everyone else I just, don't know, yeah, maybe. Look, you don't have to be Columbo to work that out, just... <laughs> everyone else was on dates and stuff and putting the skates on, and this guy was like... Been loud and brash and jabbed over his skate and thought straight away who's this fucking yeah yeah everyone's doing the uh loop the loop the loop the loop right <laughs> you've got to go the same way you know if someone falls over you know good you certainly can't go the wrong way or cut and beat people up no. occasionally you get someone in the middle of the ice rink who has to dive to the outside because there's you know there's nearly Losing a, few, the balance, there's a few crashes and stuff going on that's that's part and parcel yeah. that's fine it's one guy who's going the wrong way same guy same guy. Yeah, he's going the wrong, he's following going, me. He's going the wrong way round it. He, well, actually, what, what he's happened... He's cutting people up. He's, fo- he's diving all over the place. It was, it, was a, it, was a, it was a car crash. Was he a good skater? No. No, oh, right. that was the problem. So I was coming around the corner, and he actually came out from the corner into the middle, like at some speed, and, right. <laughs> and came straight into me. And he, 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 he slipped and fell, and as he went down, he grabbed Jess and slammed Jess in from behind. The same guy. The that same guy, you. Listen, I know. Listen, listen. Like, he had it out for L- me. Can I say, he, as he, he, she was still stood up, and he was halfway down, and he grabbed the shoulder and th- to try and break his fall, and he slammed Jess into the ice. And Jess's head smashed into the ice, and we had to oh. get you taken off, didn't we? Yeah. And, um, Bless you, man. Oh, you had a big, really you had a big uh, like soft spot in your skull. And you still got it now? Yeah, I've still got it now. About five years later. And like if I brush my hair, I can still feel it. So um, no blood was no blood was shed. Well, but, nearly for him. <laughs> no, yeah. I mean, the, the, the the I think if Matt didn't have skates on, <laughs> I would have decked him. I mean, no, listen, I was he got up say. and he was fine, and Jess was on the thing, nearly crying, like, and the thud was like you know, like that boom, it like makes you go through your through your body. I don't know how I didn't break my head. Yeah, like uh, you maybe you did, but I don't know how to cry. So Walked after him, the paramedics, <laughs> the par- listen, the paramedics had to. So they spent the t- first two minutes coming, coming, stopping me going to get him, <laughs> and it was like actually, we actually need to look after Jess. And I was like, all right, cool. And you got really upset, didn't you? Because I was trying to deck him. I was trying to deck him. When he came off the ice, I was going to fill him in. Yeah. Yeah. He's a right wanker. Anyway. <laughs> so no ice skating. So we're not going ice skating this year. <laughs> okay. Well, that's fine because Winter yeah. Wonderland. There's loads to do there anyway. You yeah. know, I went to university in Bath. They've got the most amazing. Uh, Christmas market in Bath around the, the side of the bus and the abbey and stuff it's beautiful yeah. little stalls all doing nice things everyone's um, wrapped up in their scarves their hat and their gloves yeah. shout out to winter by the way can't wait to see you guys again <laughs> winter yes Jack Frost and his merry oh, crew right, okay, love yeah. all that stuff I thought you meant shout out to just being cold <laughs> I am just shout out to Jack Frost and his crew yeah, yeah. love winter it's nice to put on a nice big jacket love isn't winter it? yeah love winter love nice the cold big. love the rain love the cold I'm a bit of a weirdo like that well, that's all right. I like snow. Hopefully, it snows. Oh, yeah. yeah. We we'll probably we might be going away this Christmas, though, so yep. we might not have to worry about the turkey sitch. What, what, what's the on the agenda? Dubai. We might go, yeah, the family goes to... On holiday, we don't know where we're going yet. But. A chance to do a few international reviews as well, I hope. Yeah, yeah ma'am. Sh- uh, big news as well, that America oh, yeah. is opening up the borders to those who are double jabbed or whatnot. Yeah. I'd love to go to America, Cam, do some reviews. Someone's actually asked that. Have you been to America before? Yeah, love it, mate, yeah. So we've spent a bit of time in Florida. Great food scene over there. It's not particularly... From what, where, okay, hang on. From where I've been, it's not particularly high-end, but there's some great fast food joints. Yeah, it's just, it's theatre over there, isn't it? The yeah, and then, you've got, mm. and then you've got, like, I think one of the first places on my hit list will be in New York. 
if anyone's been to New York and got any great recommendations, please send them in. That'd be great. Um, you, you know, you've got your lobster rolls, your hot dogs. Mm. Um, the halal guys have got obviously their their um, trucks over there. You've got the deli sandwiches, the New York Brooklyn yeah. pizzas. Massive food scene over there. Yeah, but it's great as well, Kevin. And let, I really would like to get out into America a lot. You, you know, you've got your San Francisco clam chowder. You've got your lobsters from Maine. You've got your Californian um, CBD CBD breaking breaking cutting edge scientific food. You've yeah. got you've got your smoking barbecues in Texas and the deep south like wow bruv come on let's get over there and do some reviews let's yeah. go let's go <laughs> you should I'm you excited should, you should definitely it. you should do it you should do the, the FRC goes on a, on, a, on a road well it's not really a road trip is it but a plane trip plane. But <laughs> yeah. you should yeah, yeah I, sure. I can't wait it'd be great to go and see a different culture taste a different food what you was know? it like in the Middle East when you um, like what weird food did you have out there apart from drone dragon fruit um it, so obviously in the Far East in China, um, I've travelled to sort of about seventeen provinces in China. So I've been wow. to, from like, like Shanghai and the, the more built up cities to central China. The food is exceptional. Did the you see? Food, any, did you see any of the markets? Yeah, yeah, I'm nuts. Yeah, it, it's 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 it, parts of it are, are challenging. We're just not used to seeing different what, culture. It's a different culture. And oh my god, you didn't see the dog. Um, well, uh, there is a funny there is a funny story about that, and um, you know, th- one time I was in part of China where that sort of stuff goes on, and um, the I was at a restaurant with a supplier and and the people that work for me in China, and um, they, they they the the girl turned around and said to me, they're going to do this, and I said to them, I'm telling you now, her name was Roslyn. Let's do it. If they bring out anything like that, mm. I'm gonna slap you. I'm gonna <laughs> slap him. I'm gonna slap everyone in this restaurant. <laughs> and, and I'm gonna, and then you know, and then I'm oh gonna walk God. out. So the, the people that I worked with in China, they, they, you know, they knew that, that that wasn't that wasn't gonna go down well with me. Them kind of environments. It's, uh, yeah, it's tough, 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 tough. But having said that, I'm the kind of guy that would try. You know, a lot of the local cuisines and mm. the, the suppliers. It's very, it's very much. You know, they they want you to to eat, to, to try their food. So I've tried some interesting food, but the food is spectacular. Honestly, wh- whatever you think Chinese food is like in England, mm. obviously it's, it's not, is it? It's not, and you know, and there's a lot of vegetables and fish and stuff like that, which I, I love fish. I'm a big fish eater. Um, so again, another place I'd love to go. You know, with the team and go over there and document some of this. Different, challenging stuff. Yeah, yeah. One thing I did see that what was the guy from Bake Off, Math, uh, Paul Hollywood. There we go. Yeah. Did you see that content where he went out there with BBC to do and tried those strawberries? I don't. It was like he was like they're like two hundred pound strawberries. This guy, I think he's like Japanese or Chinese. I can't remember. Excuse me. Was he made the his own strain of strawberries and they were like I'm talking. He had one. It was three hundred fifty pound for one strawberry. Oh my god. Yeah. How big were like they? Big. Like apples. You probably can get them at Norset. I'm just going to say that. <laughs> I will expect to see him on Monday. Yeah. Yeah, there was like, I think he had loads for like sort of 20, 30 pounds for a punnet. Like great strawberries. They're big, they're red. And then he had like this, out the back, he had some of these uh, exceptional ones, like big ones. Oh my God. Well, yeah, but that, honestly. It's just for me that the intent was just incredible. Yeah. I mean, the, 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 the sheer like variety of vegetables and fruit from the, from the Far East and specifically China mm. is yeah. just insane, man. You know, it's it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. Here, you go to Tesco's where well, you get broccoli, <laughs> runner beans. You don't even get that anymore. They're, all the shelves are empty. Yeah, because there's no one to <laughs> bloody pick them. Sweet corn. Sweet corn. You know, you just about get it's like a 2015. sweet potato. It's like 2015, that thing. All these Europeans coming over here, taking the jobs we don't want. <laughs> yeah. Now they've gone. Everyone's now like, now nah, I'd rather stay on my benefits. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of... There's, listen, people don't want to do those sort of jobs, do they? They're no, they people, don't. English people are st- st- stuck up. No, they real. don't. They don't want to work in the service sector. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, look at look at Costas and places like that, you know. Like you've got all the foreign students working in there. They're grafting. You know, they're the hardest working people ever, aren't they? They're, 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 hum- they're, they're, they're polite, humble, hard working. And a lot of them are studying as well and yeah. things like that. Intelligent. Yeah. You know, like... Yeah, amazing. I love to meet these people. Incredible. Shout out to everyone in the service sector. Yeah, you uh, don't get nearly enough credit. Now, Jess, we're, we're probably knocking on the door now. We're one, one hour and 16 minutes in. Anyone that's wow. still watching, what's the, 
give me a word. Uh, we, know, we like to do this thing. Give me a word. I'd like to show you're still involved in the podcast. You're still listening. You're the real trooper. You're the real celebration. What, what, give me a word, Kim. Viking. Viking. Drop, Ooh, drop, drop, drop Viking. Good word. Drop Viking now for the big hairy Viking over the <laughs> big hairy Kim Viking over there. <laughs> Um, God bless you guys They're listening Honestly it means a lot This is a brand new podcast You know like Obviously we're going to Waffle on and talk about All things food and news Have some guests in I think kem has been So interesting today um, It's great to get Someone else's opinions From their life experiences Maybe Kem, We can come on again sometime I would love to man Yeah man I'd Let's love look. to We're only local like, We didn't have anyone planned like, We're not super organised We didn't have any plan I messaged him last night He said yeah I'll come mate yeah. Look we got on great He's a good fellow He's got a cracking I don't want to talk too much about his business he's not a sales he's not a sponsored video he's got a cracking business anyone that's involved in food or want to up their packaging go and check him out just, just let's leave it at that go on their Instagram go and have a look at what they're doing and I think you'll be pleasantly pleasantly surprised they're working in a tight margin industry it's um, all about volume and numbers Yeah. and he does a great job to be competitive with the other people in the game that do the same thing so quality in that game stands up above everything else thank you now no problem now Jess did you get any questions from Instagram I did. They're not that interesting, no, but for fuck's sake. you guys I'll, have let us down. I'll go. I'll go through them. Um, Please don't read out any joke names like helicopter. <laughs> yeah. What? Big shout out. Oh, so yeah. John, shout out to Johnny Fisher from boxing. He, got, he does shout out something all the time. And it's like, good, please, could you wish my girlfriend a uh, good looking a new job? And it's helicopter. Yeah. <laughs> Ellie. Helicopter. Oh God. Go on, then, Jess. So someone said. Um, have you ever tried the sauce from the Lava Wing Challenge at Wingfest? Did it, either of you try it this year? I think we've. I think we're both very intelligent not to try right. it. Right, I can't try that at the at that point because I'm I'm effectively want to get that content, so I can't be rolling around in the bushes like the other and pouring milk all over my uh, my body. No. Um, but we'll go into that really quickly. That is one hell of an event. It's weapons grade heat. I think it's the hottest wing eating competition in the world. Um, nine, nine to twelve million Scovilles chili extract. It is bad. They have gloves. Like six. They have gloves. Six wings. They have to eat them in order, and they have to feel the burn after every wing. So it's really sort of a war of attrition. Not just a who can shove it in as fastest. And the funniest thing is, at Wingfest, Ken will back me up on this. <laughs> at that stage in the day, it happens at six o'clock. People have obviously had a few beers by now. You know, they've, been, they've seen the, the competition before at three o'clock. It's a speed eating competition. Yeah. Come six o'clock, that's three more hours of drinking. I think I want to get up on stage and do something like that. Yeah. They don't know they're signing up for a weapons grade heat chicken wings. Yeah. And the panic that you see this, Ken, don't you? The yeah. panic that comes over their face. <laughs> it's the best part of the day. When they, when they, <laughs> it is, isn't it? <laughs> when, they, uh, when, they, when that heat gets them, the panic and the fear. It's something to behold. And if you ask me, have I tried that? No, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> Maybe next year, if I could, I could enter, and it'll be a bit, bit, a bit of fun. But um, for now, I'm happy just watching. I think you'd agree with that, wouldn't you? I think I would uh, categorically agree with that. Do you yeah. like heat? Yeah. Oh, really? I you do. Not, and that's, you like, that's not heat. That's no, like, that's like, like fire. That's, Chemical. That's, yeah. That's like, you know. Well, look, let's talk about that. There's, it, there's, when you actually blend up a natural product like some kind of these sort of peppers and jalapenos, it, it's like the world's hottest ones. It, it, it's a natural product. There's, there's flavours, there's taste, there's profile to it. Science. That's science. That stuff is chemical extract. It's like basically acid. Yes. It's not real heat. It's designed to, to, to for maximum effect. It's got no flavour. It does. It's got, it's got no tingle. No, 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 you know, it's just complete. It, it's got one purpose, yes. and that's to make you pour milk all over your head, basically. Yeah. Which, um, you always not don't really care about them eating them. You just want to be like, right, right, right. The actual bit afterwards should be on stage. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, eat well, the wing backstage we, and then come on stage yeah. <laughs> to do I mean, the aftermath. Yeah. I mean, that's whenever the. That's a really good idea, that's, Jess. That's what we're waiting for as well, is to just go backstage and watch people like <laughs> yeah. just look. I mean, we'll sh obviously, you can see the content of it. On, on Matt's page, and we'll share some stuff as well. But I mean, it was, it's yeah. just ridiculous. It's naughty. You've got to wear gloves, let's put it that way. I think they should wear goggles. The amount of people that get it in their I eyes agree. as well. You'd steam up your goggles. Go on, let's get some more questions. Let's, let's do a quick fire round. Oh, there's not really that many. Oh. They're not really relevant. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Sorry. Um, We're at one hour and 20 at the moment, which is not too bad. So basically, for both of you, actually, best burger you've ever consumed? Good, good question. I'll let you go first. 
Wow, man. <laughs> Best burger I've ever consumed. Um, Are you a burger man? Yeah. You, do, you say you like kebabs. On, do you ever buy a burger? I do like... I do Look at like the thought on the man's face right now. I know. Oh, God, <laughs> that's so difficult. Um, probably... I remember having a phenomenal burger at Byron. Oh, mm? really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah? Yeah, I think... I, I, I feel like I, I remember, recall having a phenomenal burger at Byron Burger. Um, the, wow, yeah. <laughs> there's, a, there's a place called... Uh, there's a... There's a oh, no, I, I, I've got it now. Oh. There's a place called um, OG Burgers in Ealing. I've never been there. We should write that down. Oh, my God. OG Burger in Ealing, big what? shout out to, to them guys. Th th that's a place to get a burger. Cool. Really? What yeah. kind of burgers are they? Write like, that one down, Callum. Are they um, like fat or they smashed? Or? No, yeah, they're, they're, they're smash patties and, <sighs> you know, like they're, it's very, very good. Very, 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 very good. Like these guys, like they're, 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 the ingredients they use, it's like they're really trying hard to, to become a real, mm. you know, great brand and... Um, yeah. Oh wow! All right, Jess. I think you should answer that question. <laughs> Me? Yeah. <laughs> Go on. You do it. I don't know. I've got. We've been to a lot of places. What's your number one? Um. I I do like, I do like the Hungry Moose. Their burgers are banging. I like a beef burger. Really good. Yeah, like really good. Just like they do the maple bacon there. It's just insane. Just the best maple bacon. Yeah. Maple bacon. <laughs> maple bacon. Yeah. Maple bacon. Mental and it's really reasonable as well. Really reasonable. You're shout out like to Dave. Five for shout burger. out to Dave. That's a great place, that is. Yeah, really good. Like just like a little truck on the side of the road that just just like bangs out amazing burgers. So I think they're probably my my favourite one. I think beef burger wise, <coughs> uh, we do have a burger place. So our, our, our burger <laughs> is very our burgers really very good. similar to that. It's just, it, it's cut from the same ilk. Yeah. Angry Moose. Like, that's probably why. So we love that type of burger. I think a lot of food, I know you talk about what's your favourite, a lot of food is situational mm. from the time you, you had it. It's hard to answer, isn't with, it? With, yeah. the, with your current state of emotions, your current state of hunger, yeah. and who you're with, where it is. Like It all has to come into... Me and Jess had a, a pint <laughs> of shandy one day. It'd been a long walk on a hot day. We just went for a pint of shandy. And we always talk about the pint of shandy as being the best drink I've ever put in my mouth because at the time I never needed to drink more and it was like we were together early in our relationship in love it was amazing and just like we had a drink and I remember it like being special and it was just like that same with the burgers if you go if you're not really if you go to the best place in the world if you're not hungry if you're in a mood you're not with someone you don't really like you're not going to enjoy your burger yeah. that's why family and love is so important with food and the whole thing because when you're happy in your heart and you stuff it, food it makes a difference yeah it does it's that's, like, that's it's why like when that, you, um, burger we got from GBK that time. Do you remember we've Hump. been shopping? And we've been back since and we're like, it's not the same. It's not the yeah, same. We, but like it was we, just that, really we know when good. the we know when the start of the gourmet burger revolution when, when this whole thing started and got GBK yeah. open in Cambridge and we went for one and at the time you having pretty basic burgers in different places, certainly nothing too flashy. It's probably in 2013, 2014. Mm. We went there and it was like the best burger we've ever had. It had like it had Applewood cheese in Applewood it. Applewood cheese. And chutney in there as well, some sort of red onion chutney in it, like give me sweet, creamy, big burger. It's delicious. And remember, it's just like, whoa. And it's funny how then it leads onto other things, but it really hit me. Like, yeah, it was amazing. Yeah, mm. yeah. So at that time, that's probably actually the single burger that changed me the most for a burger might have been that one. Wow. Now I'm different now because I'm a I'm a burger snob. Uh, <laughs> but at the time, you think one that had the most effect on you as a person, probably that one with Jess. Yeah, it's yeah. good. It's a really good uh, All right. point. All right, so. Anything else you want to get off your chest, guys, and talk about? Someone has asked, do you get belly button fluff? If so, what colour? Depends on what colour t-shirt you're wearing, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> you gave that such a serious answer. Yeah, but it's... Um, <laughs> it's well, yeah, it's pretty much... That is the only answer, isn't it? I mean, <laughs> you're not going to wear a red t-shirt and get blue fluff. Something's going wrong there, brother. Is that, is that <laughs> you know I mean? You, you know. Too many layers going on. A lot of people are just asking when we're going to go abroad, really. Um, as soon as possible, like we we're planning for it at the moment, but it's hard. It's, it's a big to, for us to for us to make that kind of investment in the page. It's gonna be it's gonna be a really big deal. We, you know, we're gonna try and look to get a sponsor for to go abroad to help us with that. Um, 
probably needs to happen for us to go, but we're working on that at the moment. We're trying our best, you know. If there is anyone that wants to sponsor this podcast or the page, let me just, just, uh, we'll put our email address on the screen um, right now. Get in touch. We'd love to talk to you. We've got a hell of an exposure cake to give you a slice of. And, um, yeah, we're looking to progress and be the best food page out there. Maybe we can turn this into the best food podcast. Who knows? We're one day at a time. <laughs> I've got well, probably one last question yep. for both of you. Have you ever copped a dodgy takeaway and got ill? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Maybe that one that had a bite out of it. <laughs> it happened, happened to me the other week. I've had it a few times. It's, Not nice. It's, yeah, I mean, I don't know who hasn't really. Yeah. Isn't it? We went, uh, it wasn't actually a takeaway. We sat down in a restaurant. We went to Egypt about five, six, seven years ago and we decided to go out. They always say to you, don't go out the hotel. Yeah, of course. To we Shaz like, in Sharm El Sheikh. Stay in the compound. <laughs> yeah, don't basically. leave. Stay at the, stay at the safety we like, of the Hilton. Yeah. Like, we're, we're all right. We're good. We'll go out. And, you know, we were going around. And then we actually, of all the places to go to in Egypt, we went to TGI Fridays, didn't we? In Egypt? <laughs> no, hang on, hang on, hang on. It was TGI Fridays. Hang on, hang on. Do you know when you'd had all that, like, sometimes strange Egyptian food? And we were like, oh, my God, TGI. Jack Daniels yes, Jack Daniels. <laughs> Jack Daniel's strips. Uh, we're walking around this market. And honestly, this is this is when you could smell a rat. We're around this market and it was the right dive. Not being funny, but it wasn't great. Was it just? No. It was like I felt like I, you know, one of the stalls. Was, I needed to buy a knuckle duster just to fucking get us through. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we saw um, TGIs, and it was it was honestly like looking at the Messiah from where we've been, from what we've been eating in the hotel. I saw TGIs, and I was like, "Get me in there for those JD strips. I'm gonna murder these ribs." Got in there, straight away, we knew it was different. Yeah, it was like a shit not, version of TGIs. Not right. TGIs, if you watch this, by the way, I did, I did complain on Twitter and you never got back to me. Um, <laughs> shout out Twitter. Ooh. What did you complain about? Oh, yeah, I'll tell you now. So we ordered the chicken nachos to start. Okay. <clears throat> Came out, looked a, bit, looked a bit rough, to be fair. And you know if you're frying off chicken, I'm going to give you a, a time frame here, which when it's going to be when they've served us. You're frying it off, it's gone... Skin coloured on the outside. It's gone skin coloured on the outside and they've served it up to us. It was. Oh my God. It was totally I, raw. I think that's not correct. I think what they had done is they put it under the grill to melt the cheese, but just put the raw. Isn't that what they yeah, did? It was so, they put oh. the raw chicken on the nachos, then put the cheese on, put it under the grill, the cheese melted, and then they served it to us. So we got it. it was just, so the well, chicken, however they did it, they it was... They didn't, they didn't pre-cook the chicken. No. It was raw chicken. Raw, raw chicken. chicken. I'm not, not even like... A little chicken bit raw. Raw. Like, uh, yes, there was a... Uh, did a I can't remember. I mean, uh, when you're like, TGIs, you just can't make those mistakes, man. You know? Maybe it was a, a fake, a fakey one. And, uh, I haven't been back since. <laughs> But no, it was, and, and I think even, we ordered more food, didn't we, obviously, because it was just our starter. And I think we complained to them, but obviously they're Egyptian. <laughs> but they um, they only refunded us the, the nachos. Yeah, I said, I'll, I'll, I'll. <laughs> <laughs> It was bad, and we felt them really bad, like, after that, because we had all eaten raw so chicken. Basically, we went back to the compound and didn't leave again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, think it was, I think it was the day after I jumped on that fish, didn't I? <laughs> You jumped on a fish. Yeah. How big was the Matt, fish? Matt's, Matt's not very. No, I think. No, you got to say it now. Matt's not very good in like deep water when you can't see the bottom. Oh right. Do you know? And you're not the strongest of swimmers. You're not a great you? swimmer. And um, I was snorkeling. It was just off a jetty, and we were snorkeling. And um, I was like, oh, my God, like, there's loads of fish. And I was like, yeah. oh, my God, there's a, ma like, massive fish. And so it was like, fucking huge. Matt jumps in, and I, said, I swear to God, he jumped up, ne jumped in next to it. I jumped on his back. So <laughs> just, yeah, hang on, hang on, hang this on. This story on. gets wilder every time. Of course it does. It's a fucking story. <laughs> so I was, I'm standing on the jetty. I've, I've nearly drowned a few times. I'm saying, Jess, I don't really want to get back in. And she sends me, you've got to, there's a big fish here. And I said to her, where? <laughs> where is the fish? And she pointed, right? Like down, like down here, like look down here. Whilst I you're shit you not. I've gone, all right, well, I'll jump in here for a little bit with my goggles on. I fucking jumped in and its its face was like here. I must have jumped in on, on, on its back, pretty much. It was this big thing with a big um, bobble on its, apparently it's, it, we turned Gr out it's this. 
grouper. It's got a bit like a grouper, yeah. yeah. But it's, it's a big friendly one that well, comes from the jetty. Whatever you think, it'll be bigger though, you know. Right. <laughs> it, was, it was about 10 foot long. Um, <laughs> that, it was like, Moby, like, great it's like Moby fucking dick. <laughs> Moby dick. Yeah, Moby fucking dick. And I, I've never panicked so much in my life. My initial thought was it's going to eat me. And I swam back to the jetty with such vigour, screaming, uh, that everyone else thought there was a shark. Yeah, because you're in Sharm El Sheikh, which has got... Yeah. It's, got, it's famous so for like shark attacks. There was like four jetties and everyone was out the water because of that. And then it, I could see the it, fish and I was like, I'm getting out of the water now. It turns yeah, so. out it's a friendly fish that comes there every day f- to be fed. But... It copped an unfortunate one. Yeah. So did. I'm not going back to Sharm El Sheikh. <laughs> no. no. You're not allowed to now, actually, no. are you? That's it. Now we've said that. We're going to... Um, gonna, obviously, we're going we're gonna to noose rep. If I don't make it back, is it, if it's bad, the Russians have knocked me off. I want this to be said now on camera. Oh, God, yeah. I'm in a bridge. I'm in the bottom of the Thames. <laughs> I've been done. They've weighed me in. Fingers crossed it's nice, Kim. Let's see what happens, man. I'll be, I'll be, I'm, I'm excited to see what you, what you say after. So um, this week, just having a look at what we're up to, we're on the radio, or you're on the radio tomorrow. Oh, right. Tomorrow? Yeah. We're in Hoxton Radio. We've oh, actually... What, with, with, yeah. with Dave. With Dave from Wingfest. Oh, my God. He's forgiving me. <laughs> forgiving right. you? Don't you remember with Dave? You said the music was terrible. I said oh, music. my God. Yeah, that was so funny. But <laughs> he, he knows that he knows he, he knows I wasn't talking about him anyway. He does, yeah. yeah You've yeah. explained it enough times. I've explained it so many times. I think you were. There was a... a I would just explain it to everyone. So there was a guy on stage doing like live music, and the um, Dave, that who was DJing that weekend, had come off, and he was standing <coughs> with us. And you decided to go on about how bad the music was. Well, no, no not and how I bad. Was thinking, <laughs> I was <laughs> thinking to myself, shit, does he know that that Dave standing like this Dave's is the, the DJ? DJ. I didn't know <laughs> what I did. This is what I did when you said it. I think we were like, oh my god, just didn't know. Yeah, I went, Kem, you can't say that about the music. And think not. <laughs> Three, three on the bus, didn't you? Were like, yeah. no, and, but you were like, no, really shit. Like, I really, <laughs> I was really like, went to town on it. Yeah, I was saying the vibe, the vibe was bumping and it yeah. was like that. And then obviously the DJs come off and then that other guy came you on. You didn't say that. You uh, didn't say yeah, that. Yeah, I probably swore a lot more <laughs> and was a bit more brutal about it. But, you know, but yeah, anyway, he, he knew that I wasn't talking about him, but it would have been nice for a little <laughs> heads up instead of Matt <laughs> yeah. dropping me in it. You know, oh, but anyway. so funny. It you was did funny. panic about that for the rest of the week. But I yeah, did, I apologise we'll to the day tomorrow. after. We'll talk about it tomorrow. Yeah. All right, <laughs> guys, I think we should wrap it up. We're an hour and 35 minutes. Wow. All right, so, Kem from me and Jess and the rest of the Food Review Club family, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day, your busy schedule, to come down and meet us today for the podcast. I think this has been a good one. Have you enjoyed it? It's been a pleasure, man. Thank you so much for having me. And um, It's something quite therapeutic about just it, talking. It is, it is. You're just yeah. sitting here chatting with your friends, isn't it? Exactly. And um, I look forward to coming back. Let's go out for dinner together with you and your lovely wife as well, yeah? Yeah, that would be lovely. Cool. Guys, thanks for watching. And once again, a massive shout out to Parker Rose Interiors for having us in their wonderful showroom today, giving us that kitchen environment to do our podcast, which looks so good. Hopefully they sound all right and the conversation's been good too. So yeah, thanks for watching everyone. Um, Nice one. See you next week. Bye-bye. Take care.